Okay, welcome back. Uh, so, we have been looking at first order logic. We have just finished defining the syntax. Uh, we started with a vocabulary which included things like variables and relation symbols or predicate symbols, function symbols, constant symbols. And then we first defined a family of terms or the set of terms and terms stand for some individuals in the domain. And then we define atomic formulas and there were two atomic formulas apart from bottom and top, one based on equality and one based on a predicate symbol. And then we use logical connectives to create more formulas and then we use quantifiers to create more formulas. And then we said that of all these well defined formulas that we are creating, those formulas in which there are no free variables, those are sentences. Okay, so, now let us move on. Uh, because of the fact that we have these new quantifiers for all x p x and there exists x p x, we need to introduce two new rules of inference essentially. Hmm. So, the most common rules of inference that we use the first one is called universal instantiation. We will use the term ui for that. What it says is that if for all x p x is true, what does that mean? It means that for every x that you can think of in the domain p x must be true, which means that if you choose a specific individual a which belongs which comes from the set of constants that you have then p of a must be true essentially. So, as you can see this is logical, but like we did in the case of proportional logic uh, at some later point maybe we can even show and it is not very hard to show that this is a sound rule of inference essentially. Another rule that we use is generalization which says uh, that if p of a is true for some a, where a comes from the set of constants that we know, known individual constants are known individuals, then we can say that there exists an x p x essentially. Again it makes sense because uh, that when you say there exists an x p x, then we are saying there is at least one ind individual such that p x is true and we have started off by saying that, that p of a is true essentially. So, these are this thing, but we need them because we are doing everything formally essentially. So, one place as you can guess where we can use these two rules uh, is uh, when we are reasoning with uh, um, sentences. So, this is the first u rule universal instantiation. We said that all men are mortal. How did we say that? We said that for all x, if x is a man, then x is mortal. Now, we can take an instance of this sentence and we can say if Socrates is a man, then Socrates is mortal. Remember that this implication can be read as if then. So, if and then. Of course, in the language that we just discussed uh, list notation by Charniak and McDermott, they do not use the term then, but it is kind of implicit, but in many programming languages of course, you use then. And the other instance would be that if this is true for Socrates, then it must be true for some individual and we can write that there exists a man uh, x implies mortal x. Now, notice and I will leave this as a small thing for you to ponder over. What is this sentence saying essentially? Hmm? It is not saying some men are mortal because we kind of hinted that we have to use the and sign here, but nevertheless this is just the illustration of the rule of generalization. It says that if this holds, then this other thing will also hold. We also know need rules of substitutions uh, uh, because we often want to you know replace one formula with another formula, and the De Morgan laws are some of the most we saw De Morgan's laws in proportional logic also if you remember uh, this thing where we said uh, 
that uh, for example, not alpha and beta is equivalent to not alpha or not beta. If you remember this law, this was from the, the proportional logic. What do we do in De Morgan's law? We push this knot somewhere inside. So, when you push this knot inside the bracket, then it distributes over the constituents, but it flips the sign of the connective essentially. A similar thing is happening here. Uh, when you push this knot across the quantifier, it goes to the other side of the quantifier, but it changes the nature of the quantifier. You started with for all x and then you ended up with there exists x and the knot has moved inside. So, a little bit of a preview about the semantics of these connectives. We said for all x means for every x. So, if there were only let us say two people, let us say Socrates and Aristotle essentially and we will say for all x mod man x, supposing we were to say that there are two people, only two people in the domain. So, when you say for all x man x, it means that every x in the domain is a man, which could very well have been written as uh, uh, man Socrates and man Aristotle, which would be of this kind essentially alpha or beta. And if you were to negate that, then we will push it inside, then we will get the negation of. So, what is the negation of everybody is a man? The negation of that is there is exists an x who is not a man essentially. That is the negation of that, the opposite of that essentially. And that is what we are saying in proportional logic and something similar we are saying in, for, in first order logic. So, one way to think about first order logic is to think of the for all quantifier as a kind of a universal connective A and B and C and D and E up to for every element of the domain and the existential quantifier is like a disjunct essentially A or B or C or D at least one of them must be true for A or B or C or D to be true. So, it helps you think a little bit if you think of the universal quantifier as a generalized and and the universe and the existential quantifier as a generalized or essentially. And then of course, this uh, De Morgan's law will become equal become uh, easy to understand. The other ones are kind of commutative laws which says that you know you can change the order of the quantifier it does not matter you can for either of the two quantifiers, but you cannot change the order of different quantifiers. So, if I and we will see this if you say for all x there exists a y this is not cannot be changed to there exists a y for all x. We will see later as we do, but that cannot be done. For the same quantifier, it does not matter in which order you write the quantifiers. Okay. So, when we looked at this Alice example in first order in proportional logic, we said things like Alice likes maths and she likes stories. Then she said, we said if she likes mathematics, she likes algebra. Now, this is a statement about Alice. It is very specific to Alice essentially. It is like saying if Socrates is man, then Socrates is mortal, but we want to say things like all men are mortal. So, if likewise we want to say that if anyone likes maths or, or everybody who likes maths likes algebra, then we have to use first order logic. So, we want to say something like this. If someone likes maths, then she likes algebra. If someone likes algebra and likes physics, then she will go to college. To make such general statements and reason with them, we need the notion of variables that first order logic gives us and the notion of quantifiers essentially. Every man for every x that you can think of, if x is a man, then x is a mortal. Every man is mortal, all men are mortal. The variables as we have just seen takes take values from a domain and thus we have the notion of interpretations in 
first order logic where we choose a domain and interpret the language LPFC over the domain essentially. Okay. So, we want to talk about semantics of first order logic language. Uh, Let us do that in the next video. Uh, so, that you have a bit of a time to understand this how the rules of inference that we have just defined can be used later. So, we will come back in the next session and talk about uh, semantics when are sentences true and when are they not true.